Let's say that the wings on your airplane have compound curvature, like these elliptical wings. You've modeled the ribs and you want to put balsa stringers on, like these, typical of SAE Air Design and Design Build Fly airplanes. In this video, we're going to learn how to model these stringers in such a way that, firstly, they bend into assembly installation with as little resistance as we can get, and secondly, they're modeled with a feature that is adaptable and really efficient. The tree is only this long for all these stringers. Now the secret is right here in this feature, the wrap. So stay tuned to find out how to use it. stringers that are used for SAE Air Design or Design Build Fly. They're approximately half inch by one eighth inch, although you might have to measure your actual stringers that you're going to use. And because this dimension is so much longer than the, the thinner dimension, we, we know that we can bend them in this direction. They're, they're easy access to bend really easily and they hardly resist at all. So, I mean, when we're installing them on a plane, they, they won't be trying to move anything else out of position. Uh, we can just lay them in like that and glue them, clamp them. And uh, I mean, if the curvature is really intense, you can always use steam also. But uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's fairly easy to install stringers that are bent along that axis. And also if we need to twist them and twisting them along their center axis, uh, we can do that for, for instance, for uh, tapered wings that have a geometric washout. And that's easy to do also. Those, the stringers will hardly resist that being installed like that. But what if we want to combine these two? So I have here a bend and a twist. And it almost seems like you should be able to do that, but it's not the best way to design how your stringers are going to be installed and where you're going to put the cutouts and the ribs and all that to force the stringer into this position because it will actually start to resist something like that. And to illustrate, I mean, if we, if we go in here and increase this, let's say 100 degrees just to illustrate. So at one point in this twist, it's really bending along the, the difficult to bend axis and it, it's that it will resist with a significant amount of force or crack if there's a, if you're asking too much deformation out of that. So there is a better way to do this. So let's put this back to 20 degrees. And I mean, we can see that we're forcing it to bend with a, a constant center line. So the better way to do this, uh, imagine, so I'll show this surface. So this surface is kind of like a wing where uh, that has compound curvature. And in that case, if you want to put a stringer along, let's say approximately here, if we want to lay it down approximately there, it will both bend and twist. And SolidWorks has a feature that helps us do that in a way that it only does both twisting along the center axis and bending along the easy axis. And to do that, it has to actually wrap. It's kind of like you're wrapping a sticker onto 
like as if we're as if we're seeing this sketch as a sticker and we're going to wrap it on here in a way that it doesn't have any ripples in that sticker so if we visualize that so it doesn't immediately look look uh, too different from from this one but if we take a look we can see that it actually does bend uh, in this direction, it has a curve. And the reason it does that, if we take a look at the center line, we can see that what the wrap is trying to do is it kind of starts in the center and ends in the center. But in between, I mean, we can see the center line is closer to one edge than the other because it does have a curve in this direction. And the reason for that is that as it twists, the direction to bend downwards here, for instance, if we're, if we're bending downwards here, it would be a bit to the right as well. So this wrap can accommodate, uh, the wrap feature here can accommodate compound curvature and in a way that you lay down the stringer in a way that it naturally wants to uh, accommodate that curve by twisting and bending at the same time in the easiest axes. Let's take a look at stringers for a wing that has compound curvature. So this wing here has an elliptical plan form and it has a different airfoil cross section at the root than at the tip. So a, an aerodynamic washout and it has a bit of a geometric washout too. So there's really no way to avoid that these stringers, as they go down the, the wingspan, they're going to bend and twist at the same time. So in here, I'm using the wrap feature. So I'll show you how I did these. So if we take a look in the tree of the wing, the way I organized it was that they're actually only done in two parts, the top stringers and the bottom stringers. And there's an elegant way to use the wrap feature in a way that there's really not that long of a feature tree here for all of this. And uh, it's pretty trouble free and uh, easy to update and move them around afterwards. And of course, there's both the stringers and once you've put in the stringers, you're gonna do the cutouts also. So here we can see those, for instance, in the mirror, this rib here has the cutouts done, but the others don't have them yet. So let's take a look in one of these parts. So if we edit it and roll it back, the first thing that it does is it takes the surface reference from uh, the OML. So if we edit that, those are the faces from the wing OML and it knits those together. So from here, let's look inside the part itself. So we can see that we have these surfaces and the wrap itself, if we go and edit it, what's happening is that it's a sketch of a layout of these stringers that are wrapped onto the bottom surface. And in a wrap, you can choose to either emboss onto a solid or to deboss uh, into a solid or to scribe a surface. So that kind of just uh, delineates faces on the surface. So because we know the stringers are, well, they have a certain thickness, they're an eighth of an inch uh, thick, then my strategy here is to wrap them onto the bottom surface. And this bottom surface would be uh, pretty much on the OML of the wing. I've, I've set it to be a, a tiny bit, I think it's a hundredth of an inch outside the OML of the wing, just so that the, uh, 
the stringers, uh, the intersection with the ribs is completely outside of the OML. So that's the strategy. So if we go through the tree, first there's the surface, well, it's called surface offset, but really it's a surface copy uh, with zero inches from the original OML, then uh, knitting that. Then these are surface offsets that are actually offset a tiny bit. If we zoom in, they are towards the outside, a hundredth of an inch from the uh, so here we can see a hundredth of an inch from uh, the original OML. So what I'm doing here is creating that surface a hundredth of an inch outside the OML. And then this one is also a, a copy of that. So that's, this could be a, a copy of the previous. They're the same surface. The reason for that is one of them gets thickened. So if we go back to here, we have the original knit. Then these two are the same. And one of them gets thickened. So I've just named it uh, surface to thicken. And that gets thickened outwards. So we're completely out of the OML now. And this inner surface is a hundredth of an inch still outside of the, the uh, actual OML. So then there's the layout. And so this stringer's layout is just a series of lines. And the lines that I've put that are sort of mid chord, I made them uh, perpendicular to how the ribs go so that they'll uh, they'll be pretty much perpendicular the whole way through. And just to fit in about equal spacing, I, I uh, tapered the, the leading and trailing edges a little bit inwards. And in the actual wrap, this sketch is just offset curves from the stringers layout. So, the stringer's layout is the lines, and then the sketch that the wrap takes is just offset uh, to be uh, a quarter inch offset on each side, so it's a half inch wide uh, stringers. And these are still just a series of rectangles. Some of them are above, some of them are below. But the wrap, what it does is puts those embosses them on the bottom surface of this, uh, the, the thicken surface, which is still a hundredth of an inch outside of the OML. So the stickers are going to, the stringers are gonna stick out uh, a tiny bit from the OML. So that's how they wrap onto it and you can see they wrap right to the end. We don't want to keep this, uh, this thicken. So this surface and this surface are the same, but we're going to use the trimming surface to cut outwards. So all that is, is cutting outwards with the surface that the stringers are embossed onto and you keep all bodies and then you have these 14 solid bodies of each of the stringers. So there's a bit of cleanup which would be the last two cuts here. So there's one cut for cutting out where the aileron is and another cut cutting out where each of the stringers should end and that's done in the actual wing assembly. So if we go into 
stringers and here we can just a lot of these are are uh, I mean they're referencing reference geometry for where the ribs are located but uh, I mean some of it the rest of it is a bit unconstrained just to cut out the the bits that you'd want you'd have to move these around a little bit if you update where the stringers are at For the bottom stringers, it's pretty much the same, but I tried to keep the stringers uh, sort of staggered, alternating uh, compared to, especially especially at the trailing edge, because where it's thin here, you don't really have enough space to stack them one on top of the other, so you kind of have to alternate them a bit, uh, the percent chord of each of the stringers. So that can be done, I mean, if we look at the bottom stringers, it's the same, same series of features and just the, the layout is moved in so that we can do it from right here and just dragged around So for the cutouts, let's check out how to do that. I'll hide this OML and I believe this one, I've done the cutout so far. And for instance, the, the other ribs here, I don't have them yet. So you can see this rib just has this one cut extrude for every cutout that the stringers get placed into. And so how to do that, for instance, on this one here, let's do this one. So we edit it and go to its right plane with a sketch. And we're just gonna use an intersection curve. So we'll just select all these bodies from the stringers and intersect them. Then also for the bottom stringers. It's as easy as that. You can exit the sketch. And then I believe this is in the mid plane of the rib. So we're going to do then an extruded cut. And we'll do through all both of that part. And that's it. So you can replicate that for each of these ribs and you'll be done, your stringers and your ribs. And you can see how the stringers are very slightly above to the outside of the OML. And like I was saying before, that's on purpose just so that the the intersection will always create, for instance, if we look at this rib, the intersection in here always creates a sketch that's closed. Uh, if the stringer was inset a tiny bit, then you'd have a, I mean, you'd have a closed intersection, but there would be a little, little strip left of wood for the rib above it. And I mean, when you put these on, you can uh, just sand them into place anyway. So that's my strategy. And here you can see how they're just outside the surface. Oh, there's one that didn't quite make it. And uh, I mean, that's one location that will have manual fixing, but the vast majority of them don't have that uh, that issue.